Good day, UANP. I am JM Perinas. I am the executive director of DR95, and I will be your main host for today. For those who don't know me, and for those who know me, um, let's just say I'm an ordinary guy, and let's keep it that way. <laughs> this episode is a special episode because we have guests, and they aren't just any other guests. They are our extraordinary USG. So, Ooh. without further ado, kindly introduce yourselves, our beloved USG. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Brian. I'm from the School of Education and Human Development, and I am the president of your USG. And hi, I'm Rafaela Villarosa. You can call me Rafi. I'm the School of Law and Governance representative, and I am also your internal vice president. Thank Woo! you so much, Brian and Rafi. So, Marco and Kel, congratulate muna natin sila kasi kakatapos lang ng term nila. And of course, congratulations. Congratulations, mm-hmm. Brian. Congratulations, USG. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And then on the other hand, we have our regular host. Ngayon, sawang-sawa na ako sa kanila. Ayun na bahala mag-introduce na saan. Bahala kayo. Uh, Kyle G. Okay. okay, so hi. Hi, I'm Kyle Valencia. Um, I'm a regular host here in DR95. And at the same time, I used to be the anima party head. And... Daming kwento. Sige, yun na lang, yun na lang. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Uh, hi, guys. My name is Marco Pantaleon. And... Uh, I'm the editor-in-chief of the Bulletin. To Brian and Rafi, thank you for having you guys on our show. Thank you for being here. Glad to be here, Margo. I congratulate naman natin si Atty. He recently passed the UP entrance exam test for law. Palakpakan natin si Margo. Yeah, thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you. Congrats, Atty. Congrats, Atty. Di malayo pa, malayo pa. Limang taon pa. I'm not going to beat around the bush. Because we didn't want to produce this episode to review the projects and policies, but we didn't want to replicate pala the talumpati. Okay? Mm-hmm. Um, we wanted to spur a discussion regarding the ideals behind and around the USG. So if to our viewers, to our first-time viewers and our last-time viewers, this is something far, far away from talumpati. So without further ado, let's cue the intro. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo! So my first question will go to Ms. Rafi and of course to Mr. Brian. And I would just like to ask, um, given your term and everything that you've done, you have an overview, have an overview of your past projects, your past policies, and everything that you've done. So my question is, given the UANP grading system, which is tres, dos, 2.5, and all of those, um, mm-hmm. what is your grade to yourself or as a USG? Okay, cool. Uh, firstly, thank you for the interesting question. Um, thanks for trying to be creative. Uh, I do think it's creative. Uh, but of course, uh, I think it's perfect that we start first with the premise that we're probably going to answer this question, me and Brian. And that's the USG, like any social reality, is complex. You can't look at it in isolation. Mm-hmm. And so when you give it a grade, you don't just give an absolute grade for the USG as a whole, because there are several dimensions with which, you know, USG yeah. functions. I mean, is it in fulfilling our mandate? Is it in connecting mm-hmm. with students? Is it in fulfilling our individual roles, in, per- in meeting the needs of our structure? Um, whether we have a structure or we, we are building on it, or whether we talk about projects and platforms. So honestly, I mean, you know, given that, you, you can't exactly give yeah, one grade. Yeah, uh, yeah I, 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 uh, I understand your, uh, your sentiments. However, um, just for the viewers, like, give mm-hmm. a general overview yeah. of your, or a general grade that you can yeah. um, somehow give, or based on all of those things that you've done together as a USG. Yeah. Uh, I totally agree with what Rafi said. It's really hard to look at the USG in isolation. There are a lot of things that you think about or that are connected to the USG. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you're looking for a specific grade, I can't give you a specific one because you know it's not really quantifiable. But then mm-hmm. uh, to answer your question, I'd just say pass. <laughs> pass or fail. Uh, I think we passed as a USG. Mm-hmm. Um, how, oh, okay. Thank you, Mr. Brian. So I would like to ask now, um, Marco and Kyle, what can you say about um, regarding that answer, yung pass or fail? So tingin nyo ba pass sila, Brian, or fail sila? In a general overview again, I would just like to repeat that. Okay, so yeah. um, I agree actually with both of them na very complicated kasi I think there's also a lot of repetition in terms of jobs 
Um, there's a lot of different things na kailangan nilang gawin. Aside from being a representative, you have to, like, you know, you have a role as a, let's say, secretary. Or like, at the same time, um, aside from all those things, you have to be part of a team pa and all those things. I understand naman. Pero, I think it, it, it just goes to show, for me, in, in, in my perspective, you know, there needs to be, or at least in the future, kailangan meron tayong better measuring stick for these mm-hmm. kind of things. Uh, hindi lang... I understand how arbitrary the work is, but at the same time, I feel that it needs to be fair then for the check and balance of UANP. Na meron tayong proper measuring stick. Mm-hmm. That's for me. Um, to to answer better yung question ni JM, um, I would say that the. Siguro kung, sige, if I'm going to follow Brian's pass or fail, I would just say like your test, like pasa. Like, that, that would be my grade. Ang sama naman. Ang sama. Oh, sige, ya. ano sa'yo? Ano sa'yo? Marco, why are you? Okay, okay. You're not, why are you wait, kidding wait, me? Okay, um, so, I, I agree with all of you since we're all agreeing with each other. Um, and like Kyle, I believe in metrics and indicators. Like, you can say that learning is hard to measure. Um, but at the end of the day, we still have grades. Um, so, Kyle, I think three, three was a bit harsh. Um, I, I'd give them more of a two. Uh, two to five to two. No, oh, but no. to clarify, kaya siya tres kasi I feel like a lot of the policies intending, hindi po masasabi ko naging successful o hindi. Well, yeah, I, I guess hindi, that's part of the grid. Oh. Oh. So, so, awesome so, now for me. Yeah. Growing okay. pa siya. Growing grid. Okay. So, parang with, never take over. Uh, my, so, investment siya. Uh, increasing ano siya. Oh, uh, okay. Mine is, mine is uh, two to five simply because very, very above passing for me. Um, for a lot of reasons. I think this USG was one of the better USGs while I was in college. Uh, but at the same time, there are a lot of areas that it could, uh, it could have done better too. But in terms of general picture, I think if you're looking for a number, uh, however you know, bad we try to quantify things, it's two to two, two five for me. Okay. Um, since Kyle mentioned... Oh, okay, go, go ahead, Jaffe. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, firstly, I super appreciate uh, your candidness. You know, I think... Um, the USG um, has always expressed, or at least in its post, when when you talk to us, we appreciate criticism. But with that said, uh, I find it funny, you know, that we're starting with with rating the USG uh, without one first establishing, you know, the basis with which we're evaluating something. You believe in indicators and metrics, but here, what is your metric? Um, in the quote, you said, "I feel that the USG, you know, in general picture." But you know, as you know, I think we're all familiar that as liberal arts students, we don't just give general statements, general ratings over something we do not completely have analyzed. Mm-hmm. Perhaps maybe we could give a rating after oh. um, we've discussed. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, actually, Rafi, um, thank you for pointing that out. But since Kyle already mentioned it a while ago, um, there needs to be a certain measuring stick. And for, for sure. this whole discussion, for this whole discussion, um, we were we are going to do um, deductive type of discussion, wherein we'll um, go general, and then zero in in specific topics later on. But since um, you already mentioned it and Kyle mentioned it, um, my next question would be, um, what do you think is the proper measuring stick for the USG? Since mm-hmm. you said there are different metrics and different things that you can measure USG with. What for you is probably the most important metric or measuring stick to grade the USG? So since I started with Brian and Rafi a while ago, let's probably start with you, Kyle, since you kind of mentioned. Um, okay, so yeah, because like if you look at like, I know we are not in like the threshold to talk about like let's say Philippine government or like US government, right? Kaya sila they have certain people find it that there's an importance to really zero down on a specific measurement para masabi mo if an administration, eh, regardless if it's approval rating, economics, whatever. Mm-hmm. Diba? Um, palagi may measuring stick. That's why, kaya si Trump, right now, diba? Ang, ang, dahil medyo murky yung measuring stick for him, um, yung mga supporters just say economics is why he's a great president, pero everyone else is, hindi, okay. he's a bad president. Okay. So for me, for me, for me, dapat ang measuring stick is, um, in totality, impactfulness mm-hmm. uh, on the school. Um, and it has to be, when I say impactfulness, it has to be not only for the future and like setting a bedrock, but also to 
your the, the people who voted you in. So in overall totality, impactfulness. Because like, alam mo, and dami arguments na pwedeng um kanya, we can judge USG officers of how well they did their specific role. Like let's say how how well did Brian do as a president? But I would rather not do that. Um, because feeling ko yun nga, they function as a team. Eh. Um, so as a whole, the USG, I think. Um, it should be overall impactfulness to the university, Marco. Um, th- okay, thank you, Kyle. Um, before I let Marco speak, um, I just like to say that feel free to butt in anytime. You may yeah, discuss. Yeah, yeah. Feel free, talaga, okay lang. At the end of the day, magkakaibigan. Sana parin tayong lahat. Tama, <laughs> sana, sana. <laughs> okay, so Marco, what do you have to say? Um, are we still talking about metrics? Yeah. Yes. yes metrics. Uh, well, yeah. Metrics are important. Metrics are important to be accurate, like what Rafi said. But uh, the unfortunate reality is we don't have any metrics. Um, that's the reality. So should we use what we have now? A very hypothetical, just to get the discussion started type metric? I think so. And for me, that number is uh, 22225. And that's where I stand. And uh, hopefully, maybe we can move on with the discussion now. Hi. Hi. Um, thank you, Marco. Um, siguro a follow-up question na lang. Now, let's get deeper into the USG. I asked a while ago to give uh, siguro an overview grade of the entirety of the USG. But now, can I just ask, and um, I just want to ask, do you believe some USG officers did better, in a sense, in upholding their responsibility more than others? Because um, for this, kasi, for this question, we studied the Constitution, and in that Constitution, there are different um, quote unquote roles of the USG that they need to uphold. So, given those things that is stipulated or that are stipulated in the Constitution, do you think they were um, certain USG officers who were able to uphold the responsibility more than others? Um, siguro, that, that, let's go to Brian and Rafi. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. So, yeah, um, but just to give you a quick context on how we look at things as the USG. Um, I just want to point out that the six of us, we look at the USG and our positions as one thing, as a one institution. Uh, but to answer your question, yes, that's true. Um, there are better performers, just like in any organization, and there, there, there are less performers. Mm-hmm. And you can't really take that away because there are, I would say, more competent people or people who, I guess, who have more experience than others. And that causes them to perform better in the USG. Uh, and I'm not here to point out anyone in the USG, and I'm not going to do that. I don't want to point out anyone. But yes, I do believe that there are better performers. So wait, lang. Um, I have a question for Brian, yeah, actually, and Rafi. Um, so go, pulling back to the metric thing, diba? Yeah. Parang, in your opinion, what should like in in, ako, in my opinion, what <laughs> should be the proper metric, diba? Um, so given that, do you agree with my sentiment that the USG should be judged, criticized as a whole and not as individuals? And if so, what should be you know? For you guys in the future, what can be a better like gr- grading system, or what do we what can we look at to say that a USG pass failed, yeah. did great, or what? In mm-hmm. your opinion, mm-hmm. uh, maybe I can start, no, Uh I think you can't really take away the individual in the team. Uh, so the small parts make up Michael Jordan. Parts. Yeah, Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, yes, yeah. you can you can you can judge the USG by position. You can judge that institution. But in terms of the metrics, to be honest, I don't have an answer for a good metric. You know, uh, I have never um, seen any metric in any government uh, in the Philippines or in the world that you know really assess them. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. If there is a current metric, pero I think impactfulness really is important. But I think there are other things than just impact. Uh, I think Rafi wants to add to this. Uh, um, yeah. I'll definitely build on on Brian's answer. Uh, and in fact, it, we, we did actually try to make a metric oh, yeah. for the USG. And in, mm-hmm. it was a project by the Research Development Committee. Uh, but it took more time than we expected. Essentially, it's a performance measurement framework. And we were, I was going to su- suggest earlier, uh, we're basing it on good governance. If you're familiar with it, um, it's promoted by the United Nations. You can literally just look it up in, in Google. Uh, and it has more or less eight characteristics, um, you know, participative, inclusive, efficient, and effective. So that's impact. Um, but 
uh, I think what, what took time with it is making it, applying it rather to a student government context. You know, we did our research for the, for the committee and uh, there's no, you know, existing framework. And we learned that in Balaiko, right? Uh, there's no existing framework right now for evaluating student governments, uh, which is why it's an ongoing project. And in fact, you can look forward to it next year. Uh, it's going to be a project of RDC. Um, they're going to create an annual report with a proper metric, quantitative and qualitative. Hopefully it utilizes both, you know, uh, elements from the good governance framework, but also the opinion of the students because we value that. Uh, so that, you know, uses both quantitative, the survey, and qualitative based on the actual principles of good governance. Um, but of course, it's a work in progress. Uh, and it's going to take a lot of time to develop. But for sure, uh, there will be a metric for the USG in the coming years. We acknowledge that it's absolutely necessary to evaluate our performance uh, regularly because that's what helps us improve. As you guys said, there's always room for improvement. Uh, sorry, sorry, before Marco and Kyle continue. Um, I just have a question for Rafi. Um, a while ago, you mentioned that the USG made a metric, which is good governance. And mm -hmm. I'm, assuming, I'm assuming that you have an overview or an understanding on that metric. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so can I just ask, based on that metric, what is your grade for the USG? Based on just good governance. Uh, what's, what's the sort of methodology of this metric that you want to propose? Uh, if you were actually listening uh, when I was talking, yeah. um, one, this metric, we didn't create it. Again, yeah. we're adapting it from the United Nations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, but again, okay, I understood your question. Mm. Um, and second, for the methodology, I did mention that we're going to use both quantitative and qualitative. We're going to use one part is the actual survey. Um, of course, we're going to disseminate to the student body. Yeah, we yeah. need student input. Um, and so if we can get as much of the population as we can in using the survey, um, then of course that's going to be a part of the evaluation. Uh, mm -hmm. The second part of the metric, as I said, we're still looking at ways to adapt um, the good governance framework. Um, because again, you know, there's no existing evaluation um, framework or metric that is objective and that's what we're trying to be. Uh, for student governments. And so of course this is going, this is something that we have to consult, you know, faculty, actual research experts um, to create because we don't want to just, you know, put something out there just because we can. Um, but to answer your question, JM, if I were to use that metric, then I'd say that we have promoted good governance. Why? Because it's participatory. At every point that we've, you know, tried to push for a policy, we need We've made it a point to get student input through our research development committee and various means like our USG councils. Um, we have three, I mean, more or less functioning. Uh, uh, and given that, um, it's not just participatory, but it's consensus oriented. We make it a point that when we make a decision as a USG, uh, it's something that all six officers agree with, even our moderator. And, some, and of course, you know, part and parcel behind our moderator is our CSA um, officers, as well as management committee. Um, you all understand that governance, good governance, if I were to use the metric that you asked me to use, uh, then it's collaborative. You know, we <coughs> not stakeholders that we deal with. It's not always about pinning who's, who's to blame or like, you know, we could have done this better if, if this person wasn't here. No, you mm -hmm. know, governance is collaboration. And I, again, <coughs> see that in political economy. So. Thank you. I Gabby. just want to, can I, can, I, can I comment about that though? Like, I do, I do want to, like, it's not criticism at all like I do want to comment because I didn't know that that was ongoing uh, from the you guys released nga, then a file na parang um, on your Twitter na parang stating nga, and we listened to the Talumpatis we, we noticed your project and policy I didn't know that was ongoing so actually I do want to commend that super like I don't think people will understand even if you market it properly mm -hmm. how important that will be especially now na I believe from like, nga, from my five years in UANP na like, lalo na now na super dire how we've made a culture na parang, parang it's either you blame them or it's either like you wrongfully judge them. Um, lalo na now in a, in a UANP society na more and more people are starting to be apathetic and we all recognize this. I think um, that's a great, super important move, not only for your administration. Hopefully, na we can look back and then measure it 
but also for future para merong alam mo yun like kung sasabihin nila na kunyari ah wala namang point ng USD o dito eto here's the study here's the metric we made so super commendable like I didn't know that so I just wanna say good job to that anyway yeah. um how about you Margaret do you have anything to say uh nothing to add I think metrics are always good um they're simple metrics they're complex metrics I love metrics. <laughs> I think we should move on to the next topic. <laughs> Thank you, attorney. Thank you, attorney. Thank you, attorney. Okay. Um, they, uh, okay, let's proceed to the next question. And this particular question is directed towards um, Kyle and Marco. But then... Oh, yeah, naman. Ay, naman. Parang sila ata yung host, eh. So, so oh, Kyle, I have a man. question, Kyle. Hindi, <laughs> 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 pero, no, okay. Okay. Although this question is directed to Pili, uh, to Kyle and Marco, feel free pa rin to Definitely. give your opinions, um, Ryan yeah, it, gets, gets. And, and Rafi. As in, mm. go, go lang. Kung gusto awayin si Marco, go lang. <laughs> okay. So, my next question is, um, correct me if I'm wrong, to Brian and Rafi. Um, throughout the second sem, or through, I was working under the office of the president. And in my stay there, under the office of the president, um, I would always hear the word longevity. And that word longevity um, to our viewers is uh, founding or giving a foundation to different policies, vision, and mission so that the other USGs, the incoming USGs, will be able to, um, in a sense, continue what the current USG or Sila Brian mm-hmm. and Sila Rafi started. So with that being said, do you believe that the current USG's um, let's say initiative of longevity was effective or even at least effectively executed mm-hmm. there? Oh, can I go first here? Yeah. Uh, actually, um, uh, I think before I comment on that, I think we need to hear from Brian or Rafi or Brian. Like, what what is what's this whole idea of longevity? Uh, okay, so maybe we can start from before a person gets into the USG. That is when you run. Uh, I think three of us here in this podcast experience that. You know, Mark or Rafi and I we run. Uh, okay. <laughs> Kyle ran outside corny 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 corny. Corny. <laughs> and you know admittedly when I ran uh, under this political party uh, the only thing on my mind was my projects you know, what project mm. can I do for the university what policy can I do for the university but then when I get trained and then I get into the USG I get my position everything changes those projects that you promised those projects that you were thinking of might not be applicable for that year and then you start to consider that, hey, we are six or seven in the USG. We all have different plans. Who should we prioritize? Right? Mm-hmm. And I guess our problem is, in a sense, there is a flaw in the system, I would say. Mm-hmm. Because from training in the political parties, you are not as aware of the USG as you're, you're supposed to be. Dapat bago ako pala usg prepared ka Pero ako, I wasn't totally prepared. I had to study the whole summer, the USG had to study the constitution the whole summer. Mm-hmm. We had to relearn the, the processes. We had to learn how to make a policy, a project proposal in a USG format. Um, and that's what you want to remove. That's why you, we value continuity so much. Mm-hmm. So that is why we have initiatives like the USG handbook, the, the mm-hmm. proper USG training program, um, to be able to inform the next set of officers and so that they won't start from scratch. And mm-hmm. the thing is, if I may add, sorry, it's a bit Go lang, go lang. There, there go lang, has been lang. a trend. Eh. There has been a trend that, you know, and I'm not blaming USGs for this. There has been a trend that people would make projects for their year. And that's good. Yeah. Sige, bring, mm-hmm. bring out UNITAS. But mm-hmm. the thing is, would you rather do a project for that year alone and not be effective in the next years? Or mm-hmm. do something now that will create a lasting impact for the next, I know, 5, 10 years? And that is the view of the USG. We want to do mm. things that would impact not only this year's USG, but the succeeding USGs mm-hmm. so that they can be more effective with their processes and systems. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that is our view on this. Mm. <laughs> mouthful by mouthful. No, no, no. Very informative, Brian. Uh, Brian, okay. can more pa, more pa. More pa, more pa. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, I think I can comment now. Now that yeah, I yeah. know it more again. So I definitely agree with Brian. Um, we're going through the same things in the bosun. But rather than longevity, um, we think of it more of as like a succession planning, proper yeah. transition. So I definitely agree with Brian there. Na when I landed on the position as editor-in-chief, like, san, san, san banda? like where do I start? <laughs> so I agree with Brian. Where do you go? Where do you go? Where do you go? Tama, tama, tama. 
So, so that's my first point. Uh, my second point is, uh, well, I guess if there's anything that to be, you know, reconsidered and take a second look at in terms of longevity is, um, you could say that different administrations have different needs. Uh, for instance, I'm not sure if this USG was able to plan any sort of projects of how they'll be able to manage online learning, for example. Um, so maybe the next USG and the USG after that, maybe something else happens. Baka ma displays ang UANP. So, you know, maybe these are all hypothetical scenarios, but those are the cons of longevity. I agree with longevity. I feel like a lot can be do more done with longevity. Uh, but yun nga, you have to balance that with real actual projects that are catered to now. So those are my two points. Lang. Um, Which we all. did. I believe we mm -hmm. did. Uh, I think during the first semester, we, you know, we planned the Uintas Fair. We had the USG Christmas party for the committees. If you're looking for projects, huh? Mm. Uh, you, you also have the PMT projects, which mm. we have to understand that they are USG projects, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They are a committee of the USG or a department of the USG, and that's what other people don't realize. Um, that's the reason why PMT was created in the first place. Because if there's no PMT, then the seven officers in the USG will be doing those projects. They mm -hmm. will be leading the projects, and we won't have time for anything else. Mm -hmm. And that is just focusing on projects. And the USG also had a lot of initiatives during the first semester with policies. Uh, Rafi did a pretty good, good job in the Constitutional Convention and Referendum. Um, if you guys saw, there was a good marketing campaign with that. We had um, laminated flyers on the tables. What, what, Rafi? And collaborations also. Yeah, and collaboration with orgs for the Constitutional Convention. So these are the things that are not as fabulous as what people would think, but they mm -hmm. are the call of the time, which mm -hmm. we did mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Siguro for me, I, I don't mm, com, parang comment ko baka masyadong misguided, so I would rather not say it. Pero I have a question na lang. Um, cuz I, I think I think cuz ako din eh, I agree with longevity in a sense that um what you were saying kanina about systems, right? Um and mama we might tackle about this more is yes, yes. that I super agree na may pagka twisted pang pa systems natin na uh, even uh, again again so i was nga party head of anime Brian you were there so yung during that time may kita mo talaga how <sighs> limiting some of these systems can be yes. for a USG or we can um and i think that's a a great way then to this conversation this tough conversation about the concepts is also a really great way to explain to people to further explain to them the limitations nga of the USG. But I have a question about your administration specifically and when it comes to longevity. So can you say that longevity is your battle cry? Um, diba last, I think two years ago, parang something gold, something yeah, like that. Gold, yeah, stay gold, yeah. Oh, stay gold. So is longevity your battle cry? Is that your, <laughs> your overarching concept as to say? There's actually a funny story behind that, Kyle, if I may share. During the first part of the, during summer, when you were planning things, we took like a month on thinking of a hashtag. <laughs> like, ano bang maganda? May, may stay gold, may shine on, ano maganda sa USD natin? Uh, you know, it, meeting after meeting, we'd have like 10 minutes dedicated for that one. You know, what do we want? Even though we already know what we want as a USD, we can't really, we had a hard time making it a hashtag. And then we realized that maybe there's no need for, Hashtag after all. Because, you know, what we promised to each other was we wanted to fulfill our own mandates, our positions, what is asked of us. And I think UAMP already has a battle cry and we should stick to that, which is Unidas. So, so to answer your well, question, okay. yeah, that, mm -hmm. that's it. Mm -hmm. um, no, because, um, okay, again, I super agree with the longevity thing. I think, um, Kamiren, eh, sa DR95, we've been having internal, yeah. in making this episode, we've had internal conflict of Anong mas, and there's a question later na parang, um, anong mas predicated on yung boundaries ng USG? Is it students? Is it apathy? Or is it the system? Ako super system mo. So I think longevity is a great point. I do have to point out though, I think kailangan ma-materialize or kailangan mas sabi out loud or mas maging clear to people on what the main predicate of the longevity means. Because longevity is not a goal. Longevity mm -hmm. is an effect uh, of of like a mission that was planned out and then it was like nangyari siya for a long time because gaano ka solid yung policy like yung mga nagawa niyo was like something that really stuck within the university and then it will have longevity i just want to know and maybe for the people listening kung longevity 
like ano yung na-establish nyo na magiging long mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. yun lang yeah. para oh, ma-materialize can I, lang yung yeah. can, I, can I try to add on that? So I think the yeah. simple question is uh, five years from now uh, there's a USG uh, what sort of project that you're instilling right now the mararamdaman? I just yeah. want to ask now. Yeah. Uh, I do want to clarify that um, I think we focus more on continuity rather than longevity. Yes, longevity is important, feasibility. Uh, but then that is what we've been talking about, continuity and not longevity. We do talk about feasible projects and policies. And I think that's where um, Rafi can explain this. The policy, policies can kick in. You know, mm-hmm. projects can be short term. We do it this year, next year, walana. Mm-hmm. Think of uh, um, other pro- past projects in the USG. Nah, that only happened one year. But in terms of policies, those are things that can be continued. Those are mm-hmm. things that will, uh, in a sense, be feasible and will be beneficial for the next USGs and for the next terms. Rafi, do you want to add to that? Yeah. Um... I have three points. Um, I'll try to be brief, but it, back, it backtracks a little bit um, on our whole concept of continuity. Um, because in fact, you know, we 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 tackled it from a lot of dimensions, honestly. Um, and I do want to clarify that our goal as a USG, um, in which we are imparting to future candidates, is continuity. Um, in fact, I was kind of shocked to hear longevity. Yeah, yeah. I was a little bit like, whoa, where'd that come from? <laughs> um, but yes, continuity, because it's, it's more active. Um, you know, how do we continue what we started here? Uh, so three things. First, I already mentioned candidacy. Previously, we, didn't, we weren't aware of what the administrations were like. No one really talked about the processes within the USG. And so candidates kind of go in blind. Um, but mm. we want to change that, um, which is why at the beginning of the year, um, and Brian talk to us all about this, that it's okay that we're partisan because that means we get to impart our experience and our knowledge um, to few possible future candidates of the USG and therefore, you know, impact the USG in the long run because then you mm. have candidates not going in blind, mm. but candidates who have insight. Uh, yeah. So second thing, following candidacy training uh, and being partisan, which isn't so bad, uh, is Seeing this year as kind of like a quote unquote critical juncture, if I were to be like dramatic about it, um, it's a term in political economy, but critical juncture in the sense that this year was an investment. Um, we invested in establishing the structure of the USG, which wasn't formalized before. What, what does the structure look like now? Um, to us as the USG councils, which allows us to collaborate with all the organizations and various sectors of the university, whether that's the academic, the civic, the varsity, um, and even our own USG committees. That allows us to understand the people we're trying to serve. Um, That's part of the structure that we established this year um, that allows future USGs to actually serve. Because that was the problem that we had at the beginning of this year. Um, We wanted to push through with our policies, projects, platforms that we proposed as candidates. But we didn't have a structure, we didn't have resources that allowed us to, to push through with, with um, university-wide. And uh, uh, my third point uh, is, uh, it touches a little bit on what Marco said earlier about uh, making relevant projects and policies that tackle the needs this year, as well as later on. Uh, we've done a lot. Honestly, uh, and you could you know feel free to go over the old talumbatis that we <laughs> that we made. <laughs> uh, they're kind of long, but they're worth it. Um, I like to think. Uh, but policies, like for example, the the research development committee. I'm sorry, I keep mentioning this because it's it's the first thing that always comes in my head. Um, but again, you know, you saw how the research was pivotal in changing academic policies this year, but. As RDC is a policy, it's a committee, it goes beyond just this year. Um, the research that it continuously creates and you know, feeds decision-making bodies like MANCOM, CSA, USG, is gonna stay and it's gonna strengthen the policies that actually cater to student needs. So actually that's a concrete thing that allows us to manage the needs of the student body. Um, but in terms of, for example, uh, supporting 
civic and arts organizations. Um, Maida, our CEGO, did a really good job of making Arts Month sustainable. I mean, if it weren't for her, a lot of those organizations wouldn't have had the support concretely um, that they need to be able to grow um, as individuals and as teams. And we also have Lance's Finance Officers Workshop, which honestly will change the way um, finances are handled in various organizations of the, of the, of the entire university. Um, it's more than three modules, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Lance, um, but uh, it's very comprehensive. And in fact, he made an assessment, you know, that, that caters to the level of financial literacy that UANP students mm -hmm. have yes. at the university. In a nutshell, a lot of the policies and projects that we made this year, we're looking at basic standards that perhaps before wasn't addressed uh, or didn't have concrete protocol uh, before this administration. And these are projects that are going to sustain themselves, um, not just for this term, but for the, year, for the terms to come. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Um, I'll go straight into the next question because you've been mentioning projects and then policies <sighs> and then you've been doing um, all of the things, uh, you, you've said all of the things that you've done and it was mentioned a lot back a while ago, uh, yung systems and even Kyle mentioned this about Kanina, systems or apathy. So my next question is, I, uh, Aside from the pandemic, okay, um, we all know that the pandemic is tragic and everything that's happening. But aside from that, what do you think was the biggest or the bigger hindrance to your plans from the start of the school year until now? Was it the system or was it the apathy of the students? Or, is it, or maybe you can answer if there is really apathy. With our plans, you know, I, I'm going to go personal here uh, because mm -hmm. you can really take away the personal side in the USG. It's yeah. definitely stress. You know, to be honest, I was really stressed this year. Um, I was enjoying, definitely, but I was stressed at the same time. Um, considering that you have majors classes, you know, to attend to, you have to read a lot of readings for your classes, homeworks, etc. And on top of that, you have like three to five meetings a week. Uh, the stress definitely builds up, considering that you are just given 12 months, maybe less than 12 months as a term, to finish everything that you want to happen. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that pressure, that stress talaga is a hindrance to the USG. Pero again, it's not that um, nagpatama kami or nagpatalo kami sa stress. I still think that we did a good job despite all of these things happening. Uh, so to me, on a personal note, I really think it's stress and uh, other factors uh, related. To yeah. That. Okay. Before I go to the other um, guests and of course to Marco and to Kyle, um, siguro in terms of the entirety of the USG and given those two options, which is systems and the student yeah. students, um, what do you think is the bigger hindrance? And and and. and we're we're not trying to ano, like we're not trying to like corner you into an answer. It's just na mm. um, analyzing as in yun nga, yung bigger motive namin here, yeah. which is for clarity for students. I think mm. that's the especially for younger batches, yeah, you yeah. will understand this. For younger yeah. batches, that is the giant argument to be made. Eh. Yeah. Like that is yung pag nag, when they talk USG, yun yung, yung, yung debate. Like mm. what is what is hindering them more mm. from the overly hyped expectations yeah. from meeting the overly hyped expectations of people is it the system or we just want to know in like yeah. even mm. like no, well, yeah. kami, so. yeah. may may yeah. add also may add to Kyle's question it's it's also more of like uh, put yourself in a position of someone who wants to run and if they heard your answer right now Brian they'll think na stress lang diba? Uh, they won't think that there are other factors maybe like the system or student apathy so like as a person who's been there and done that uh, you could frame it as a question uh, yeah. uh, if you're running for the USG, what, this is what you should look out for. Yeah. Well, to answer your question directly, uh, with those two options that you gave me, um, mm -hmm. systems or student body, I would personally answer systems. And that's the thing that we're changing right now. And it's evident with what Rafi has been saying for the past uh, how many minutes in this podcast. That's it. Thank you, Brian. Uh, Rafi? Okay, cool. Um, I'll build on what Brian said. Uh, I do agree that it's systems. Uh, he, he has this funny quote that he says in our meet <laughs> that he says in our meetings. Uh, but I, I don't know what verbatim, but it's something like if you can't change the flower or something, or but if you're trying to help a flower grow, you don't change the flower, you change the environment where the flower grows in order for the flower to grow. Mm. Uh, so what, what that essentially means is that we're trying to improve the system in order to improve the student. And when the student improves, 
the student is actually part of that system because he participates um, mm. or is inherently part of the system. So when that individual improves, the system also improves. Mm. So structure agency kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, um, yeah. It's, it's working from the conditions in order to improve the tool. Yeah, um, definitely agree. Um, my answer off the bat is systems. I think that students only respond to the systems that they're in. Um, but I, I have to ask, um, since we are, we're all in agreement, let's get to the details. Do you think you've set up the next USG uh, for better system for them to succeed, given all the hindrances uh, that you encountered, failure of election? Um, you have to go through CSA, then Mancom, and even then, medyo malabo pa. So did you set your next USG up for success, uh, especially now that you talk about continuity? Uh, I, I can't say for sure uh, if they'll be successful next year, siempre. But I do believe that what they're going into is better than what we started with, right? Um, and to be honest, Marco, since you talked about this whole CSA mancom proposals thing, again, I don't. I, I really am thankful with CSA. They've been a good mm -hmm. help to us, as in they would guide us with their proposals mm -hmm. and everything else in between. But that is also a hurdle for us uh, mm -hmm. in a sense that we say we have a project proposal or policy proposal. Um, yeah. They have to check it, uh, examine, uh, after revision, uh, and mm -hmm. then for some cases, they have to go through Mancom. Right? Mm -hmm. um, so there is that thing also that we have to consider. To be honest, right now, uh, I'm not sure if there's a plan right now in terms of changing that system. But as of the moment, mm -hmm. with our current constitution, um, that's what we have to live with. Okay, um, follow up, Kyle. Sorry, I know I'm going to ask you Oh, um, sorry, 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 sorry. Lang, lang. Um, so I think the question on everyone's lips right now is: Would you rather be under the CSA, or would you rather have not? Uh, would you rather have no CSA that sort of manages you and holds you accountable? Um, would you rather have another student sort of body hold you accountable rather than the CSA? And since you, Brian, said that there's a lot of bureaucracy. Um, uh, would you rather have a CSA in your operations or not? To be honest, I never really considered, um, this year at least, Marco, mm -hmm. never really considered CSA out of the picture. I always had them in the picture. And to be honest, they've been a good help talaga eh. I mean, mm -hmm. I can't, I am not sure how next USGs will survive without a representative from the school, right? Um, because admittedly, also, they, they have a lot of experiences as well. Um, and these things we put to use. Um, we also have a lot of things in terms of communicating to the management committee, right? It's not every day that the management committee is available, right? So we go to CSA, we ask them all of the, about these things. And in a sense, it's also a check and balance for the USG. So to answer your question, I think right now, uh, mm -hmm. I'm not as confident yet for a USG to have no CSA. Mm -hmm. yeah, to answer your question directly, that's... Mm -hmm. Maybe Kyle can add. Yeah, ako, not more really, ano, uh, call it the, ano, what's this again? The anarchist in me, or whatever. <laughs> um, hindi naman anarchist, hindi, hindi naman. Pero for me kasi, um, again, with my short experience in like UANP politics, um, I think that that where's, yun yung, yun yung crossroads eh, that we have to wait and see. Kasi, the reason why I gave you guys, like, not to hurdle, hurdle back, ah, but the reason why I gave it a three, nga, if I was to grade you guys, it's because, yun nga, it, it, in a nutshell, kung hindi magets mga some people, you guys did sacrifice a lot. A lot of the glamour. A lot of the... Na explained din to sa amin nung last na the, the one we tried to shoot before. Um, na, in reality, madami kayong na-sacrifice na glamour and the praise of just having giant projects. And you, I agree that you were trying to fix the systems. I agree. Pero for now kasi, it does feel more like um, you enhanced, for me, ah, for me, you're trying to save a system that's arguably broken. Na. Mm -hmm. uh, you were trying to enhance a system that was arguably, mm -hmm. like, alam mo yun, from its root core, medyo malina rather than trying to rebuild from yeah. start. Um, so, I don't know. Um, it's either, I, in, in my personal thing, I'm graduating na naman. So, I want to see in, in the future if it's going to be like, because if this all pans out, all your, all your making it easier for future USGs pans out and somewhere down the line, 
na ayos nga yung structure, mm. na ayos yung systems as a whole, then mm. yes, your term would be a success. Pero if hindi, then I would say na it would, yun nga, yun yung fundamental flaw of mm. USGs that the ginawa ninyo and USGs before, which is mm. you tried to enhance an already mm. broken thing. Yeah. May I add to that, Kyle? Um, from where I stand, um, like uh, I am not in the USG, of course, but I think accountability is a wrong term to use to describe the relationship between the CSA and the USG because accountability assumes equal partners. So I'll hold, I'll hold you accountable, you hold me accountable. Um, but correct me if I'm wrong, Brian, huh? but isn't it that if the CSA says no, wala kayong magagawa? Isn't that the case? I'm sorry, can you clarify your question? Um, my question is, um, accountability assumes uh, equal position among partners. I hold you accountable, you hold me accountable. Uh, but don't you think that, you know, you propose something to the CSA and the CSA says no, uh, let's discuss it, but at the end of the day, at, at the end of the day, no, wala kayong magagawa. So these are, this, this question is for all the students who are saying that, is the USG really governing us or just the faculty there in the CSA? Who, who really is governing the students? Yeah. yeah. Well, you have to understand that it is us who make the policies. Mm. It is us who do the research. Lahat mm. ng problema nyo na we gather, kabe magagather, mm. we make the project, the policy proposals, then we pass it to CSA. Yeah. Uh, and yes, sometimes it's really hard to get rejected. Uh, I think my fellow officers had a lot of experiences with their proposals getting rejected. Uh, but at the end of the day, that's the nature of what we're in. That's the system yeah. that we're in yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, and in the start of the year, we already acknowledged that. That we yeah, are not yeah. in a perfect system. So what do we do? Mm. Do we complain about it? Mm. Do we blame people? Mm. No, let's work with what we have. Mm. And I think that's the perfect, um, I guess, the perfect manifestation of that is our collaboration with Mantom during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. We could have just blamed them for not canceling classes. Right? Mm. But we didn't. We worked with them. We collaborated with them. Yeah. We went through a series of compromises. And I think it turned out well. Yeah. Um, especially if you compare it to other universities. Um, I think UANP really is doing better compared to other colleges. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, 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 can, uh, may I have one last? Uh, one last, go 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 <laughs> uh, to, to Rafi or Brian, whoever. Yeah. Um, so you describe the system as sort of you guys bringing policies and research to the CSA and the Bancom for their approval. Would you really call that governing? Isn't that more of research and like, sorry for the blunt term, huh? it's go assistant ahead. work. It's assistant work. Wouldn't you call that assistant work? Now, because it's not accountability. I think we've established that. Now, when they say no, and when man comes says no, yeah, I get we're not. I get that we're not in an ideal system. But realistically, I mean, I, I guess the word is lalaki sa lalaki. Are we really yeah, gonna call it a government, yeah. or are we, is it simply just assistant work? Jackie, you yeah. Yeah, go. actually, there's <laughs> a lot of things running through my head right now. I'm trying to organize it. Uh, I'll, I'll try to also share my insights based on stuff that Kyle and Brian said and and Marco said. Uh, the first is um, about how we're trying to fix a system that's already broken, um, or trying to enhance something that's broken, and it it doesn't get wholly fixed next year, then it would have all been for nothing. Uh, personally, I think that's, that's a little, that's kind of a sad way to look at, at, at the social reality. Why? Okay, I'll compare it to the Philippine national government. We all know it's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of bad, right? Right now, um, a lot of us are really, we're suffering under the national government, but are we just gonna, um, is it, is solving a bad government as simple as um, neglecting the 70 plus years of democracy that it's trying to build on and it's still very young. Um, of course, we're gonna work from that context. We're gonna work from that history. We're not gonna, um, we're gonna see what, what is the cause of all this, like whatever corruption and all that stuff. So what I'm trying to say is that, um, sure we can try to overthrow a system Mm -hmm. But history will always be there, and we have to work from there. Mm -hmm. um, in a nutshell, what I'm trying to say here is the concept by Mr. Paul Dumal and Dr. Camposano, the nation is a project, and so the USG, it's a project. We can't change it in nine months and expect the system to be good, just like that. Again, it's, 
it's a reality that takes a lot of stakeholders um, to, and cooperation to be able to, to improve. Again, what we're forgetting here is that we're not excluded from the system. Mm -hmm. um, we are fully capable mm -hmm. of gradually improving that system yeah. mm -hmm. um, with our participation. But building from there, uh, what I think what Marco was saying was, uh, would you really call it governance? Uh, what, what we do as USG. Um, if you're familiar with, I'm sorry, I'm citing so many theories. Go lang, go lang. Okay, guys. Go lang. Like we learn. Um, but I think Marco, also you're familiar with the theory by Peter and Pierre, the theory of governance, where uh, governance happens at various levels. You know, local, national, international, and they collaborate. They intersect. Um, I guess to make it like something you can imagine, uh, Peter and Pierre related governance to a marble cake and not a chiffon cake or something, or like a usual layer cake where um, authorities are like, you know, one level each and then you have to go up. Um, it's a marble cake because they intersect, you know, the authority. Um, CSA, for example, cannot make small decisions with um, dealing with the USG committees. No, that's mm. our, that's our jurisdiction. Uh, how to yeah. understand where they're coming from and giving, um, yeah. giving them what they need in terms of like resources yeah. or understanding mm -hmm. how their projects should go. Mm. Or when it comes to Midas' work as Seagull, um, CSA doesn't have jurisdiction over the support that the Seagull organizes. I mean, they didn't organize Arts Month. Uh, in the same way that Lance as CFO um, has control over the budget of the USG, that's something um, CSA has no control over. As we all know, governance isn't just formal, it's also informal. Yeah. Um, and so, in, and what's governance in a simple mm. decision making? We make our own decisions that CSA can't make um, on a micro level. So where we're dealing with um, two, I mean, more than one level of, of decision making here. I mean, sure, they make macro levels, like what's, what organizations are allowed to do, but they can't dictate the minute things that organizations do, and we as a USG. Um, okay, okay. yeah, I, I get it, man. and I think, um, again, me and Mark are just playing, like, I don't know, our Ikaw opinions lang. are like, Ikaw lang. Ikaw lang. <laughs> thank you, thank you for throwing me under the bus. Alam mo, Marco, si Kyle, you know, I, oh. I've known him for the past, how many <laughs> Ganon pala si Kyle. Oh, oh eh. Be, be, no, it's not so the best friend that I know. Oh, wait. Uh, <laughs> why, oh, oh, guys, guys. Uh, J, JM is the host. Oh, yeah. JM I'm sorry, is the host. Sorry, sorry. Uh, sorry, sorry. So, baka na ba kayo magsalita? Baka na ba kayo magsalita? Sige, go. Um, keep it short na lang to Kyle and Marco. Kasi... Mm. Ah, okay. So, yeah. One, one, last, one last each tayo, Kyle. Tapos we can move on. Kasi medyo okay, mahaba yes. na ito. Okay. So, um, first of all, I understand yung saan yung... Saan hindi nag-i-intersect yung thoughts natin. And I really... You know what? At the end of the day, so we will never truly understand this. And we understand then, as much as we're trying to understand your limitations as a USG, we understand ours then. Now, we weren't there making the policies to deny or like we weren't there in the meetings with Mancom or whatever. But I think that's yun din yung misunderstanding um, dun sa sinabi ko kanina na I'm not saying that you know we rebuild from scratch. Now we change a democratic system, or do we change the whole thing? We're just saying that I think me and Marco combined. Now we agree. Na ano, uh, our question that was this governance, and then your answer was hindi sila yung nag they decide ng direction, di ba? Pero hindi sila yung ano hindi sila yung gumagawa ng projects or hindi sila yung gumagawa ng ano. What we're trying to say is that don't you think we should adjust the system? to wherein yung ginagawa ninyong efforts has more bearing. Not just mm. something that when it hits the wall of CSA, wala na siya. Um, don't you think that we should at least fight for more autonomy? Mm. We should fight for a lot of things. Kasi, again, when you talk about um, continuity and longevity, kahit naman na iiwan mo sa kanila yung research development team or iiwan mo sa kanila yung UNITAS, like yung mga councils ninyo, if by the end of the day, all of these structures work together and form a plan and tinigil ng CSA, then what it what one what was it all for? Mm. Yun lang yung point. Mm -hmm. Siguro, I was trying to make kanina. Pero, oh, sige. Final pointer na ako para tapos na rin. Um, for me, my view is, and I've held this view ever since the beginning, is students should be allowed to make mistakes. Um, I agree. And I think that I by the CSA so, being there, 
um, they try to make it perfect all the time. And there's always going to be an adult looking, you know, holding your hand and saying, don't do this, don't do that, don't touch that, don't touch this. No, fair, you need to let the child fall in order for it to learn. That's feedback, right? That's psychology. You have to have feedback in order for you to grow and learn. So I think, uh, at least for now, Kyle, we disagree on a lot of things, but we agree here. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I think, you know, at the end of the day, the CSA will always limit the student government's growth. And at the end of the day, there's so much more potential to the USG and that the CSA shouldn't be holding the hand of the USG wherever it goes. That's just my opinion. All right. um, thank you to everyone. Uh, my opinion at the start of this podcast was, if I asked this question, is it systems or is it apathy? My answer would be apathy. Hello? And I'm just, I, just have, I just have one. <laughs> Are you serious? I just have one question. Get out, question. Get out, Josh, <laughs> I'm a mediator. Oh, yeah, I'm a mediator. So I just have one question. Um, and admittedly, towards uh, at this point of our discussion, um, I may be chancing towards the system side. But I just have one question before we continue. Um, my question is, um, in changing the systems, there are different stakeholders so that that would be possible. Paul Eko, Colin? No, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. Um, there are different stakeholders. There are different stakeholders. Um, you mentioned some a while ago, CSA, Mancom, the student body. And I believe personally that the biggest, let's say, stakeholder in making this successful is the student body because they mm -hmm. are the main participant to make everything better. That's what I believe in. Now, mm -hmm. do you think, um, do you disagree with that point that the main stakeholder to making this possible is the student body because you are making the change for them? Mm. And um, siguro to answer that question, can we keep it na lang um, on per side and then mm. keep it super concise? Marco, Marco, ano ba? Oh, Ako muna. Okay, one per side. Ikaw na ba? One per side. One per side. One per side. Ang hirap naman nito. Ang hirap. Yo, Enpoy. Yo, Enpoy. Yo, Enpoy. Go, Kyle. Go, Kyle. Message mo na sa akin. For me, hindi. Hindi talaga. Like, well, ganito. Um, Especially, siguro, Brian, me, and Marco, medyo matagal na namin sa school. And sobra, we've seen a, ch a change of, like, <laughs> parang changing of the guard. Na parang, mm -hmm. I would say na when I was um, first year, like, let's say, Hatch Week or something. Sobrang dami na. Nakakostume kami ni Brian, bro. Nakakostume mm -hmm. kami ni Brian. As in, sobrang dami na ako. Ha? Mickey Mouse ako. But anyway, oh, anyway. So, yung point ko lang is, I think, though they, they are not the... I think, okay, so if you're gonna talk about like, okay, so there's administration, there's USG, and then there's students, right? You're making me pick, right? Hindi talaga eh. Like, ito yung time na invalidate ko yung question mo. Kasi feeling ko, if mas may power yung USG, if mas ayos yung systems, as we would say, if mas ayos yung electoral ways, kung mas may times na to plan, if they know what to expect when they run, when they make projects na kaya talaga nilang ma-commit, ma-magawa because... Um, mas clear yung system of elections. Alam mo yun? All those things. Then baka may mga mas projects, may, may mga projects silang magawa in the future na medyo mahirap talagang tanggihan as students. Mm. It's not, apathy is not growing. People are just changing. It's just a subsequent thing. Okay? If I, I would say na, oh, wait, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say, kung naglabas ko nyari, yeah. nagka-power ang USG to like, let's say, kunyari, crossfire natin and dun pwede si Parokya ni Edgar. Sa tingin mo, mas madami pupunta, JM. Like, TV siya. Like, mas madami talaga pupunta. Pero that's very hard to do. So, yun nga siya sabi ko na parang fix the start of the career of the USG officers. As in, election pa lang. Dapat clear as day na yun. Yung electoral ways, clear na yun. And then, give them more power. Tama. Allow them to make mistakes, as Mark would say. Allow them to really make use of their grasp sa students and make yeah. projects talaga na, alam mo yun, not, not just very creative, but also, alam nila magiging impactful without limits. Or at yeah. least, within reason. There. Okay, thank you, Kyle. Um, Ryan. Ryan. Or Rocky, Brian. 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 Sorry, what? You can take it. Oh, okay. Ako na lang, Ryan. Ah, sige. Joke lang. Again, to me, like, listening to what Kyle Marco said, also, actually, I think we're all on the same page here naman eh, at the end of the day. We are all agreeing on the same things, maybe just minor tweaking. But to be honest, GM, when I was in first year, I've been hearing apathy. Pagpasto ko pa lang, first org na sinalihan ko, apathy na naman, apathy. 
the year after that, third year, fourth year, and even to my fifth year, poor apathy. Uh, I'm starting to think that, you know, apathy cannot be removed. If you look at other schools, uh, the well-known schools, the big four schools, for sure there are apathetic people there. Mm -hmm. You can't really remove people who do not care about the USG. You know, what we have to do as an institution is to just make things better. Diba? Try to make our surroundings, our systems better so that we can get more people to participate in our initiatives and, you know, and eventually um, have UNITAS. And if you think of it also, I think we, we um, only focus on the people who are not active. I think we also should give credit to the people who, who are in organizations. The six USG committees, ang dami nun, around 30 people or 30 to 60 in a committee. We have numerous organizations, home organizations that are supporting their schools, they're supporting their interests and supporting the USG. And I think it's time for us to also appreciate these people who are working for UNITAS rather than those who are just as you guys say it or as we say it, apathetic. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Medyo tatahimik na lang ako next time. Hindi na ako <laughs> so, sorry. No, I'm kidding. Um, we're, we're gearing towards the end of the podcast. So I will give you questions that um, are specific to you or situational. Yes. Um, this will be probably my last question. So wow. Uh, this will probably be my last question. And uh, I am so inspired by you guys. Thank you so much. So, <laughs> so, my first question. Hey, JM Parinas. Uh, JM Parinas. <laughs> Continuing to continue, okay, to continue. Um, siguro my first question to is for Rafi. Um, Rafi, um, since elections is coming up, and then I think it's widely known that you are running for the USG. Yeah. And I would, I would just like to say good luck, and I hope you the best. I hope the best for you. But in terms <laughs> of doing, in terms of your next, um, your next term, possibly or hopefully, what would you change? Supposedly, you would win if you held the position next year. Change about the term? Um, what you did this year for next year. Jim, are you still going to your question? Jim, I'm going to replay. Replay. Okay, replay, replay. Okay, replay. Okay, my question Dude. is basically um, this year, you already held the position as the IVP. And then hopefully, next year, supposedly, you win. Um, what will you change or do differently? in the next term that you did this year. Um, is that better? That I did personally or that we did as a USG? Um, you can go... <laughs> Sorry. Going... You can go as a USG. So that, that, okay. that it's more full towards the people next. Okay. Um, I wouldn't so much say as change, but build on, improve on. No, and consistent. That's the reason why. That's the reason consistent. why. Um, right. And... As we, you know, said the whole time, this year was focused on strengthening the USG as an institution. So now that the USG as an institution is strengthened, the goal next year is to, in a sense, shell out service, to put out service uh, in, in various ways. So that's where you're, you're going to start seeing more presence and more bigger programs and initiatives because now the USG is strengthened. So it's service not only inside the structure, but outside as well. Thank you. Thank you, Rafi. Um, I'll go straight to the next question. How about you, Brian? Um, sadly, you are graduating. I will miss you. Sadly, grabbing sadly. Oh, no, Happily, like, happy 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 celebrate. Happy 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 oh, Happily, <laughs> I want you to stay. Kasi, um, no, but um, since you are graduating and um, you are the um, USG president, um, what would be your advice to the incoming USG? the incoming USG. <laughs> I think there are a lot of things that I would say, uh, you know, and I'm probably going to expound on this in our training. But I guess uh, an advice would be to have someone to, like, have a best friend or as my, one of my mentors would say, have an anchor. Okay, because again, the USG can be really stressful. And I know if you're looking for a technical answer, I can think of one right now because it's the first thing that comes into mind, eh? You know, it's really stressful talaga eh. And it's really good to have an anchor as a person. Because if you're, you know, if you don't feel well, if you are stressed with a lot of things, it might affect your work. Um, and for me, it really helped me with um, this anchor of mine or having the USG with me or my best friends around me really helped me in my performance as a USG. So to me, 
to whoever the next president or the next USG officers may be. Um, it really is about protecting your health and protecting your, I would say, yeah, mental health. Yes. Because that's oh, thank important. You, Brian. Thank you, Brian. And congrats on graduating. Thank you. Brian, congrats. Okay. congrats. Uh, thank you, thank you. Let's so, congratulate si Kyle din naman and Marco for graduating. May PE pa siya next year. And then, may PE pa. May PE pa. May PE pa. May PE pa. May next year. May Arnis. May Arnis. Oh, Kyle. Anyway. Uh, oh, my God. Anyway. I'll ask my final question and then you guys can just give your say to whatever you want to say. But my final question, with what draft and with what Brian said, the consideration, um, what do you think the USG can improve on for next year? Are you talking to us? Yes. Uh, grab it, grab it si JM, making questions on the spot. Ah. Um, sige, um, sige, I'll go first. Um, look, all right, I love none of these None of this is personal, naman eh. Like, like to everyone listening, especially. Um, this is this is politics. Na you know, this is for cons- like constructive criticism. This is to actually uh, try to bridge the the questions of a lot of people. Um, but I do have to say that um, again, I I hold firm with my opinions uh, from the very beginning of this episode. Though I I kind of see more, parang oh, sige. Like change na pala yung grade. Ngayon na nag-clear out sa head ko. Um, I would say, siguro ma same na kami ng grade ni Marco ngayon. 2.25, mga ganun. Pero, siguro my advice for future USG is the realization na, though Rafi might say na, I think, like let's change the the USG is strengthened na. Um, the USG is stronger now. To, to say na it's strengthened, I, I'm not so sure yet. Um, pero, now that it's stronger, um, I think it's going to with this pace, uh, with this pace, and you guys relatively did your a good job per person, diba, In your roles, mm. um, in this space, I think it's going to take a lot more USGs of strengthening before we get to the actual like no bar service, uh, walang walang hindrances, and um, it's just that um, it was unfortunate also, na kasi I know in your USG there was a lot of. Alam mo yun, there were a lot of proven superstars na talagang matagal ng service sa school. Um, so, that kayong dalawa and like, it's just a shame na for me, I think you guys could have done so much more with a better system or like a stronger system or a more trialed, a parang tested system na parang baka yun nga, uh, baka naayos natin dapat supposedly before. Um, I think you guys... Um, double down on policies and continuity and longevity. Um, yun nga eh. I don't think I can say that your term was successful yet. And I think you guys understand naman why because it all depends then in the future. But I also have to point out na for the future USTs, na I hope I hope that if you are going to plan for longevity, um, if you do plan to 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 promote uh, continuity, that it's going to be a long-term thing. I hope that you do not sacrifice the people of today, the people who voted you in position. I hope that ma feel pa rin nila that hindi lang the regular run-of-the-mill projects ang binibigay sa kanila na USG, but rather, I hope it's something new, refreshing, kasi feeling ko yun yung kailangan niya to get people to to really care about the school. So, yun lang. I think, again, I agree, medyo na strengthen further ang USG. So next year USG le- less reason you have less reasons to give us on why it would be hard for you guys. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Sorry, uh, can I clarify something along with what you said? Mm-hmm. Uh, did you say that Go we ahead, did bro. not prioritize the students of this year? No, no, no. I'm and we focus too much on the future. I'm saying that um, because pinaka priority niyo is policies and whatever and this is not an indictment to you and your to your administration you see kasi kanina nga nung ina-explain ninyo na you know it takes it takes a while eh magbibigay kayo ng policy magbibigay kayo ng letter ninyo and then it takes a while for the comments to come back mag mag-argue pa kayo i'm sure with man comment csa so it takes a while you have 9 months and from the amount of policies na ginawa niyo na kami rin naman we agree are great eh, research ano I think na 
alam mo it's an it's a trade off talaga eh. you, do, you can't be in three places at the same time and i'm not saying na um i'm not saying na you failed in making projects for the people this year i'm just saying that if you were to compare the for for future and for now malayo yung for future nyo because you were able to put so much effort into it you get me not saying na wala kang effort dun sa projects for the people today pero can you imagine nga if binaliktad nyo and prioritized nyo is just making projects? Edi, I can say the same for mm. long-term things. So it's not an uh, indictment. Mm. Yeah. Brian naman eh. Kaya kasi naman eh. Kinikilig si Kyle. Kinikilig si Kyle. Alam mo Kyle, you're so malabo. Okay. Sir, okay, okay. Continue, Marco. Okay, so sige. Um, if I were to give advice to the next USG, what would it be? Uh, first, I want to premise this by saying na okay talaga yung USG this year. Um, I've experienced very good USGs and I experienced really bad USGs and this USG was good. Um, they were very out there. I see Brian walking sa cafeteria natin, nangangamusta ng mga tao. Sabi ko, yun, yun dapat presidente natin. Very available. Nagpapay, nagpapay very approachable. Uh, nag, you know, papapogi. Ay, joke lang. Um, <laughs> so, my, uh, my two points is, number one, I guess to be truthful to yourself. Um, learn how to call a spade a spade. It's so easy to say that everything's a work in progress. I am a work in progress. Uh, Kyle's a work in progress. DR95 is a work in progress. But we should be able to objectively sit down and say, um, this is wrong and this is right. And, and in my opinion, to objectively make my case, I think the USG as of the moment is glorified assistant work. And it might you know, rub some people off the wrong way, but an outsider looking in, I think, will agree with me. Number two is to fix the system. Um, in a sense, you have to rise above the system. Learn that the system is flawed, but don't cooperate to the system. Uh, try to sort of, you know, try to change. Don't be afraid for radical change. Uh, you should be allowed to make mistakes. That was the mandate of the student government. Hindi yung kailangan, uh, it's always a walk in the park, kailangan may alaga or babysitter. Um, sorry for the language, uh, very blunt. But lastly, it's be realistic. Um, and I think the reason why the USG needs to be realistic is because you can have so many projects, you can have so many policies, you can have so many slogans, but at the end of the day, like, what do the students really need? Uh, do the students need more power? Do the students need more responsibility? Then fight for that. And I think there's a lot of emphasis on trying to be super cordial with everyone, trying to be cordial with CSA, good terms, ganyan. But I think the USG should not be afraid to say na, we're putting our foot down. We're representatives of the students, and this is what we demand. So that's my final take. Oh, and magkon kon na kayo for the ano elector election, please. Like for, for the, <laughs> yeah, sana lang, mag, sana, lang, so. yeah. Yeah. Oh, Sige, no. ano ah? Um, may I make like a super duper? Pat patapos ng budget yam. Ako din eh, ako din eh, mayroon ako sa sabihin oh, yeah. tapos. Oh, go lang, go lang. Bigla ako naging ako rin, gusto rin ako sabihin eh. Hindi, may tatanong lang ako. Hindi, may tatanong. May tatanong lang ako sa inyo. Sige, go na. Go na, hands up na. May tatanong lang ako kay Brian and kay Rafi. Kasi alam mo yun, bira ako naman makausap dalawang USC people at the same time. Palagi si Brian lang tumatawag sa akin ng gabi. Pero anyway, um, Brian, I have a question. And to Rafi, what do you think of ano, maybe changing back to the SEB system? Um, kasi... Um, I, I find that, um, I think, medyo familiar. Again, nag-ani mga ako, I began the party. And so, now looking back, I think it, it it's about time na since meron ng committees there. Yes, yes. Um, and it seems like the school orgs are b- parang medyo mas Getting stronger. formed na sila. They're stronger. Do you think it's time to go back to the SEB way? Kasi feeling ko ang daming maayos na problema. Yeah. Failure of elections, baka mabawasan. Um, uh, but must prepared ang USG kasi they're running for a position. So what do you think about that, people? If I may not, Rafi, uh, let so, me. Sorry, I'm sorry. I just like to clarify for our viewers, SEB is the student executive board. Nice one, yes. host. Yeah. Nice yes, one, yes, 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 yes. Thank you context, so much context. for clarifying yeah. student executive uh-huh. board. If I'm not mistaken, it was trans- the SEB, our student executive board, transitioned to the USG in around 2009, 2010, around that time. Um, and the reason why they changed it is because before um, you enter the university as a CAS student, 
you don't enter as a said student if you're HCD or whatever. You enter, everybody enters as a CAS student. And come your third year and fourth year, or rather, come your third year, then you choose a specialization. So the SEB legally only represented CAS students. But then when the system changed, when everybody can enter the university and have a specific school, just like how we are right now, Kyle entered as an SMN student, Marco, Rafi, SLG, Aho, SEB. Mm -hmm. um, it's different now. Um, so to answer your question, if do we have... Should we go back to the old SEB system? No, because it's not applicable to the context of today. But if I would rephrase your um, I'd say question, can we bring some systems of the old SEB system to today? Yes, probably. Um, what specifically, I can't give you right now because I have to study it further. Uh, but I've been hearing a lot of things about the SEB that can be applied today or can be yes. at least uh, improved on in US today. Mm. Good okay. question, okay. Good question. Good question, yeah. Kyle. Like good answer, guys. Brian. Killing uh, Brian, good answer. Oh my. <laughs> Descriptive. <laughs> Brian, um, Brian, you wanted to say something. Uh, uh, the question. Uh, yeah, I just really, you know, I I understand your side, uh, Marco and Kyle. Um, this whole thing about um, making mistakes, mm -hmm. and to an extent. <laughs> Uh, how I wish that would be that that, that was our year this year, diba? If we if I could just accept or approve a policy um, as the, your USG president, I would, diba? Let's say to give um, incentives for everyone for dean's listers. Kung kaya ko gawin yun, I would. Um, and it's really a struggle. And I, I'm talking to you guys uh, as a as a student, na din, na? Mahirap talaga. Um, there, UNP is a young institution. And I think what that's one thing that we have to acknowledge mm. compared mm -hmm. to the bigger school. And we have a lot of uh, improvement. There, there has to be a lot of improvement during the next few years. And I'm really grateful that Rafi is running again so she can continue at least, at least the vision of today's USG and have proper continuity at least between our terms. So yeah, I really appreciate you guys. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate you too. <laughs> You're being cheesy with that. What did you want? Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I appreciate your thoughts rather. Yeah. Oh, I, I appreciate you, Kyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. We can leave now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Anyway, go. Yeah, anyway, anyway. anyway. Anyway, and that wraps our episode. So thank you so much to everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, but before... I go, I think the best way to say thank you to our USG is through the editor-in-chief of the Boston. Mm. So, Marco, do you want to say anything to the USG? Uh, definitely, definitely. Um, we started the year. So, definitely understand where you guys are coming from. Um, and we're very thankful that you guys have continually interacted with the Boson. So, our, our, our role and our job is to hold you guys accountable. And I hope through doing simple things like this through Discussion Room 95, uh, we're able to accomplish it. And no matter, you know, mag -away -away disagreements, the point is it's getting out to the public and they know what the disagreements are. So that's where we stand in our mission, which is thought leadership. Um, so th thank you very much for coming here, Brian. Really thank look you, up to you. you. Thank you, Rafi. Um, um, Jim, back to you, sir. All right, thank you More so power much. to and, Boson. And <laughs> Boson strong. <laughs> and to end the podcast, <laughs> and to end the podcast, I would just like to say to our viewers and everyone here, um, the three people in our in this episode, specifically Marco, Kyle, and Brian, all of them basically graduated. So the purpose of this episode is for you guys. So I hope you guys understand that this is all for the betterment of our school and of, for everything that we do. So thank you, Marco, Kyle, and Brian. Mm. And to Rafi, good luck next year. And let's yes. all hope for the best. So mm. congrats, everyone. Thank Ramon you. Ramon Yuseko for president. <laughs> Ramon Yuseko for president. Ramon Yuseko. Right. Go Ramon. Okay, sorry JM. I love you Ramon. Anyway, right. that ends our episode. Hello. Anyway, that concludes our episode. Thank you so much. See you next time. Bye. Maraming salamat.